call you the maker of the universe. We call you the first and the last, the beginning and the end. The one who speaks a word and it does not return to your void. The God of all flesh, the beginning and the end. The Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Elohim, Jehovah El Sitkinah, the one who makes your name where there is no will. Jehovah is your name. Nobody takes your place, God. You remain sovereign. You remain king. Wherever you are, give him the worship that is due to his name. Give him praise that is due to his name. You are worthy of our things, God. You are worthy of our things, God. Blessed be the name Jehovah. Thank you, Jehovah.
Lord, you are the God who stands in the gap for man, God. You mediate on our behalf, Jesus. You speak on our behalf, Jesus. No flesh speaks when you speak, God. No flesh speaks when you speak, God. When you stand in the gap, no one takes your place, God. We lift you high, God. We lift you high, God. We adore your sufficiency, God. We adore your sovereignty, God. Blessed be your name, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit of the Lord. Bless you, Jesus. We bless you, Jesus. We bless you, Jesus. Yes, yes, yes. Praise, give him praise, give him praise. Lift up your voice and worship him. The one who was, is, and is to come, will give him praise. There is none like him. There is none like him. Ah, glorious in holiness, fearful in praise, is always doing wonder. We worship you, Jesus. You are worthy to be praised. Lift up your voice. Give him praise. Give him praise. Hey, how God anointed him with the Holy Ghost and with power, and he went about doing good. And healing every disease. We worship you. There is none like you. Impossibility especially. Yes, intentional. He stepped out of time to create time. Yeah, hey. Just to control the time that he created. We worship you, the wisdom of the wise. Hey, we worship you, Jesus. We give you praise. We give you praise. You are worthy of our 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 praise.
We worship your mighty name, O God. You are the Alpha. Thank you, the young, the young, O God. We magnify you this morning. Have your way, O God. The shirt of days, the Prince of Peace, the Immortal, the God. We worship you this morning. You are Jesus. Thank you, awesome God. Thank you, the Prince of Peace, O God. Thank you, the young, the young, the only wise God. The Immortal, the Invisible, the old shirt of days. Somebody give you the glory this morning. It's a day you have made without giving the glory. Without giving the praise. Thank you. It's a day as made which I rejoice and give you the glory. You are the whole song God, the Prince of Peace. The Bible says you are making rejoice against judgment, O God. Take control this hour, Father God. Somebody asks him to have his way this morning. As his word will come, ask him, let his word speak to you this morning. Ask his word to speak to you this morning. Ask God to speak to you this morning from the word of God. Let his power saturate your heart. He's the illuminator when he comes, he illuminates. Ask him to eliminate you this morning. He's the finished work of Christ. He's the one that dwells in us that we put in our mortal body. Ask him to have his way this morning. Take control, Father God. We bless you, awesome God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Father, give me the glory this hour. Take control of the place of face. Take control of the immortal and invisible God. For let your glory fill the earth. He said, all over the earth, your glory, O God. As the prophet prophesied, your glory will fill on the earth, O God. You are the water, the center, the circle of the earth, the habitants, the are just in your eyes. We worship you this morning. Have your way, O God. Blessed be to your holy Father God. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Our text this morning will be taken from the book of John. John 9, 1 to 12. John 9, 1 to 12. And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither had this man sinned nor his parents, 
but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. I must walk the works of him that sent me, while it is day. The night cometh when no man can walk. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he hath thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay, and said unto him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which is by interpretation sent. He went his way therefore, and washed, and came seen. The neighbors therefore, the neighbors therefore, and they which before had seen him that he was blind, said, Is not this he that sat and begged? Some said, This is he. Others said, He is like him. But he said, I am he. Therefore said they unto him, How were thine eyes opened? He answered and said, A man that is called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes, and said unto me, Go to the pool of Siloam and wash, and went and washed and received sight. Twelve. Then said they unto him, Where is he? He said, I know not. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I want you to pray this morning. Say, Father, Father speak to me speak to today me, in the name of Jesus. Speak to me this morning, Father. Say, let, Father, let this not just be an ordinary meeting in the name of Jesus. Let it not just be an ordinary Christian meeting. Say, Father, speak to me mightily today in the name of Jesus. Speak to me mightily in the name of Jesus. Speak to me mightily like never before. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, faithful Father, for we bless your holy name. For in Jesus' mighty and powerful name we pray. We're going to be praying the Holy Ghost in two minutes. We love the spirit of the living God. It's the spirit of power as an evidence of God's power and grace upon our lives. Bring the Holy Ghost wherever you are. It's the spirit of the living God. Fall afresh on me this morning. In the name of Jesus. Malira Rabusita, Eka Ibrundo Kasupa Kaligne, Mela Brundo Kasupa Kasuta, Lera Rabusita, Ela Brundo Kalida Pukasuta, Ela Brundo Kasuta, Leba Su Aliga Lucita Yagaligade, Malida Suta, Mela Abuset, Liga de Badus and Aligade, Le Brongo Suta, Mekalu, Ita Libra and Kusata. Spirit of the Living God, touch your people wherever they are right now. Begin to touch every heart right now in the name of Jesus. Let it be move of your power in the name of Jesus. Let it be revelation of your word. Spirit of the living God. Revelation of your word upon your people in the name of Jesus. Your word says you are the best teacher. Holy Spirit, take preeminence of this meeting now in the name of Jesus. Gandusa tatu kalagi meku metusa meninga into sota meka ido suda lega dunsga tapu suda into libro nuka suke kuse taya spring to the living God we bless your holy name Lord God Almighty we give you the praise and adoration for in Jesus mighty and powerful name we pray Amen my Lord and my God it is a great privilege to be in your presence. We are not living in the dispensation of the Old Testament, in the shadow where we need to wait for one year to hear from you. But we thank you because of this great presence that, Lord, we can come boldly to you any time, any day, any minute, any hour to say, God, you are the living God. Take all the glory in the name of Jesus. Father, take preeminence of this meeting. Speak to your people. I decrease this hour that you may increase and all the glory will be yours. And the blessings will be released upon your people like never before in the name of Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty and powerful name we pray. Amen. I want to welcome us to another wonderful Friday in God's presence. We thank God it is always a great privilege to be in God's presence. Uh, there are a lot of people who may be locked up in one place or the other or in a place of war or where there is evil unrest, where they don't have the opportunity to hear the word of God. I think it is a great privilege and that is why I don't take that presence for granted. And I give you God all the praise and adoration in the name of Jesus. Now, uh, today we're looking at a man born blind receives sight. You know, basically, this is a scripture I believe that we have heard over and over again. Several times we've heard about the scripture. But most of the times, what we see in the scripture is basically the healing power of Jesus in the scripture. 
But I pray that the Holy Spirit is going to open a new dimension of the scripture to us. And I believe that the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Now, I just want to draw attention to two scriptures before we deal with the issues of today. First, Ephesians 3 verse 20 is a scripture we all know. Ephesians 3 verse 20 that these with the power of God, walking in man according to the grace of God upon man. All right. Now, it says that the Spirit of God is an evidence of the exceeding greatness of God. So, I am trying to explain Ephesians 3 verse 20. I want us to understand the power of God that walk it in a man the power of god that helps us both in good time and in bad times he said the spirit of god is an evidence of the exceeding greatness of god so it is a proof and a demonstration of abundant power of god upon mankind and that is why when we pass through situation this is an evidence of the finished work of grace upon the life of every believer now when we look at matthew 11 2 to 6 Matthew 11, 2 to 6. I want us to pay attention to this scripture. I believe it's another scripture that we've heard. We've had a lot of conclusions about the scripture. There have been a lot of theological debate about the scriptures. There have been a lot of emotions and feelings about the scripture. But I want us to look at the scriptures in the dimension of the leading of the Holy Spirit. Now, in Matthew 11, 2 to 6, listen to the scripture. He says, John the Baptist sends messages to Jesus. So we already know where I'm going to. He said, and when John had in the prison about the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples and said to him. Now, I want you to pay attention to something. The works of Christ is very, very important in this topic today. When we talk about the blind man receive his sight. Now, he said, the works of Christ. Now, when you go further, he said, are you the coming one it becomes a burden to these people he says are you the coming one or do we look for another so when you look at these scriptures a lot of things basically we go through our mind looking at it that when he baptized jesus the bible made me understand he said they fulfilled all righteousness and the spirit of god was upon john the baptist mightily and this was the same john who baptized jesus and on the day of baptism the father revealed jesus to the world he said this is my beloved son in whom i'm well pleased listen to him and this was an evidence and a confirmation that jesus is the son of god so when you look at this scripture it becomes contradictory when john now says he said are you the coming one or do we ask for another all right now when you go to verse 4 jesus answered and said to them now look at the answer of jesus constraining the fact that John was in prison. We, 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 we usually say that John, uh, Jesus or God is full of mercy and compassion. You know, whenever he sees situation, he's full of mercy and compassion. And the same thing that happens to the man that was born blind. But again, how come Jesus didn't have compassion on John while he was in jail? Understanding that he would be beheaded. So this would be a burden upon believers that how come God left him? Now when you go further there, look at what Jesus said. He said, then Jesus answered and said to them, Go and tell John the things which you hear and see, that the blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, and the deaf they hear. And when you go further, he said, the dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. Pay attention to two things. His first, he spoke about the works of Christ. And now he's concerned about something. He said, the gospel being preached in that uh, verse 4. Now, when you go further there, it says, uh, and blessed is he who is not offended because of me. Now, when you look at the perspective here, again, like I said before, when you look at the lives of the apostles, we saw the way they died. We may basically say, how come our God who is so merciful did not save them from the trodom of the law or from the death of, you know, the leaders and things like that. But again, there is something God wants us to learn this morning. Even when we are in jail, even when we are in our dark moments, all right, we must understand the spirit of God upon our lives and we must understand the works of the Father. Now, John the Baptist sent his disciples. Why? Because he was discipling these people. Now, if you notice at the time, after this revelation, 
Jesus started speaking great about John the Baptist. He spoke about him being one of the greatest men. And if you go further in that verse 12 in Matthew 11, he said, the kingdom of God suffer violence. That means the gospel dispensation is pressing on and the kingdom of darkness is trying to put a hold. He said, but they will not avail. All right. So what was happening at that point in time? John was concerned about the works of Christ to be sure that it is the same Jesus that the disciples were in the safe hands for them to be able so that for them to be trained and propagate the gospel further. So he was afraid of false teachers. Not that he didn't know that Jesus was the king of glory because there was a confirmation by the almighty God on the day of baptism. But he wanted to be sure, to make sure that disciples were in the hands of the Lord God Almighty. All right. And this, I believe, is a lesson for us this morning. So we may be in dilemma. We may be in the place of wherever we're going to do persecution on affliction. But if you don't have the presence of God upon your life, believe me, it will be difficult for us to stand the test of time. And again, when you look at John the Baptist, he did not detour. But he went through the persecution and the Bible said his head was beheaded. So we must be very careful because the Spirit of God is an evidence of exceeding greatness of God upon mankind. And this must be communicated to, to unbelievers. Alright. Now, if you go further in the Matthew 11, 2 to 6, before we go to the theme for today, it speaks about the works of Christ, like I said. And he said, and bless the sea who is not offended because of me. We must understand that there is a walk. And that's why when you look at our society today, a lot of people keep saying, uh, like I was telling my workers today, I said, be joyful that you have a lot of people who ask about you. Be joyful that you have people who can call you to say, bro, how are you doing? How is everything with you? But you realize today that even believers are not even grateful about the call. And when you look at our lives today, because of the lack of knowledge of God, because of the lack of the presence of God upon our lives, you notice that there are a lot of suspicion and things we do as believers that affect us today. We're going to see that when we go deeply into it, right? He said, I'm blessed to see who is not offended because of me. Now, the gospel of John leads us to trust in Jesus, which is the word of God. And that is exactly what Jesus was trying to portray to the people. And that was the reason why Jesus came. He said, the gospel of John leads us, we must trust in Jesus. He said, we were once blind, but God gave us spiritual sight to see him through where he saw Jesus alone. So you cannot see God in any other dimension. And that's why when you look at it today, a lot of people are afraid of the word of God. Sir, ma, there is no difference between the time of the Jews and the dispensation that we live in today. And when you look at it, we have the word of God, like I always say. But people don't trust and believe in this word of God. They don't believe that there is life in this world. And we're going to explain this through this scripture today. A man born blind receives sight. We're going to see the power of God's word and God trying to illustrate the power in his word. If you look at it today, they've turned the church to herbalistic nature, all right? So people don't believe when you say, by the power in the name of Jesus, this thing should happen. So now people more believe, they, they believe more in handkerchief, they believe more in anointing oil, they believe in something, they just need you to give them something, just like every other Babalawo can do, or basically we call them the oracle or soothsayer. They just need that thing to keep in their pocket. They just need that thing to give them confidence. But God is making us understand that his word is more powerful today. All right. Now, when you go further there in Ephesians 5 verse 6, if you look at it, like I said, he said, this is not a time for theological debate, but redeeming the time. So we can never recall time. And that's why I was speaking about the works of Christ. A lot of people, they've neglected the works of Christ. And that's why Jesus keep emphasizing on the work. He said, what my father tells me, that is what I do. But you realize today that a lot of people don't listen to God, but they listen to their instinct. They listen to their illusion. They listen to what people say. They don't care to check whether it's in the scripture, but they just want to have a mindset. But God is saying, trust in my word, and my word will set you free, because Jesus is the word of God. So in Ephesians 5.16, it 
He said, this is not the time for theological debate, for feelings and emotion. He said, but redeeming the time because the days are evil. We're talking about the days of heresy, and heresies, the days of affliction and persecution. And we can basically see what is happening today. And that's why I tell people, when you are following, make sure you test all spirits. You know, I remember someone, I'm not going to mention him for 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 professionalism's sake but there was something that happened recently there was someone who was always castigating the man of god so whatever man of god does he comes on air he analyzes everything based i don't know where he gets his scriptures from but he uses illusion or basically his feeling and mind to interpret the scripture and when you look at it today he said when you are pointing your fingers all right to men of God, something recently happened to the same man. And the same man is coming on air to give a defense about himself. But you've already shot yourself in the leg. The same thing he was doing is coming back to him. So we must be very careful in a time like this. It is redeeming the time because the days are evil. These are days we should propagate the gospel. These are days we should stand for the truth. These are days we should listen to the word of God and the word of God will set us free. Now the key point I want us to look at there is that our encounters with Jesus help us to affirm the word it means to declare, to proclaim our faith because obstacles are being removed from our lives and dark clouds are gone. And that's why when you saw the man that was born blind, he said, I was blind, but now I can see. So whatever you believe, whatever you think about Jesus, it's none of my issue. But I know that I was once in darkness, but now I have encountered the light of God. All right. Now, if you note here, basically, when you look at that scripture, there were some controversies that were happening at that time. You know, they started asking Jesus, what possibly would have happened to this man? Has he seen on his father and things like that? But there's something I want to draw to us this morning and I want us to understand and we'll go to the text proper. All right. Listen, sin does not bring sickness. Otherwise, all unbelievers would have been in the hospital. Note it. Sin does not bring sickness. Like I said, all the unbelievers would have been in the hospital. And I believe that the hospital wouldn't be enough to accommodate the people. This is unbelievers. Then talking about believers who are living in shadows. So lots of people would have been admitted in the hospital by now. But I want us to understand something. And that was what Jesus was trying to illustrate to them. However, burdens with guilt and remorse does. And this is why Matthew 11, 28 to 21 says, Come to me, all ye that labor and heaven laden. And this talks about the burden and cares of life. And this is what Jesus was trying to tell them. He said, Live the stress of this world. Live the guilt of this world. Live the theological debate of this world. Live the arguments of this world. Because there are a lot of things that we burden us. There are a lot of things to argue about. When you look at the scripture, believe me, there are a lot of things that will shake you, believe me. But Jesus is saying, come into my rest and walk according and obey the word of God. And again, incorrect amount of sleep. We cause people to fall sick. All right. And when you go for that eating habits, there are some people who just eat anyhow. You know, stress, debt. A lot of people are in debt. All right. If you go for the peer pressure, alcohol, smoking. I was talking to someone this morning. I said, do you know that? I remember there was a guy, after drinking about 10 to 15 bottles of alcohol, he would tell you he's just starting. You know, I remember there was a time, you know, when you drink just a cup, you will start seeing stars moving around you. But again, this is what we must understand, all right? So, when you look at it, like I also told him, there are some people who have been smoking what they call marijuana, all right, for years. But there is someone who just picks marijuana and smokes it for one day, he knocks his head off, all right? But these are things that affect the human body, all right? And this is what we must understand. And we must walk in understanding and not looking at the perspective of sin as a cause of sickness in our lives, all right? And that was what the disciples were trying to illustrate, and we're going to see that. Now, let's look at key elements of today's message. What are the key elements of today's message? We're saying a man was born blind, received sight. What are the key elements? One. There was obedience. And that's why Isaiah 119 says, If that are willing and obedience, you shall eat the good of the land. He had an encounter with Jesus. He said he had light. All right. We must trust in God. 
And that's what we can see in Proverbs 3, 5 to 6. He said, trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not on your understanding. And that is why when Jesus did this miracle, the Pharisees, they interrogated the parents of the man that was born blind. They did understand the power in God's word. That how can these things be? How can these things happen? All right. And again, the man had faith in Jesus. That was continual looking on to Jesus. Even when he was confronted with the little time he had with Jesus, the Bible said he remembered the name of Jesus. He said, that man, Jesus, healed me. He said, I was blind, but now I can see. And we talk about this when we go further the faith of this man in correspondence to us as believers today what is the third key element of today's message jesus ministry was not as he felt led by the father sorry jesus ministry was as he felt led by the father so there was no traditions and there was no denominations and this is what we must understand so most of the things we do are we led by the holy spirit to do it you know, I, 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 sometimes when you see a lot of teams or you see a lot of gatherings, you know, and you begin to ask yourself, how are they led to come about this gathering? You know, I will repeat this again, like I said before. You know, someone keep telling me, said, you have to make the scripture to suit the youth. But that is not 2 Timothy 3 verse 15 to 16. Look at the scriptures quite clearly. You don't use the scripture to suit people because the scripture is the way. So you cannot amend the way. And that's why he said, I am the Lord. I change not. This is my principle and my disposition. So there is no way you can go to the Father except through Jesus. And for you to go through Jesus, you must understand who Jesus is. Because we cannot see Jesus in spirit, but we can only understand Jesus through the word of God. And that's why the word of God more validates the gathering that we are gathering. Not the gathering validating the word of God in the other way around. All right. Praise the Lord. Now, when you go further, he said, for descriptive, for further descriptive purposes, the healing of spiritual blindness comes only with the knowledge or admission that one is blind in the spirit. You know, he said, one of the greatest problems of people is when you have a problem and you don't know that you have a problem is one of the biggest problems. You know, I, I, I got a, 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 a quote, you know, during the week about the proud, you know, when a man is proud, he feels he walks in the right direction of life. But that state leads to destruction, right? And they just keep pumping into it. You see that illusion, that ego in them. They just keep going in it, all right? So our ministry, basically, like we said, it said there must be uh, admission and the knowledge that one is blind in the spirit. And that's why when you come to Jesus, you profess him as your Lord, to say, Lord God, I know that you died, and I confess my sins to you. So when you admonish and submit to the king of glory, he said, there is total deliverance, all right? He said, the spiritual blindness is gone, and will begin to operate in the light of God. So that is very key for descriptive purposes, that the healing of spiritual blindness comes only with the knowledge and our admission that one is blind in the spirit okay now let's look at today john 9 1 to 5 john 9 1 to 5 we're going to be looking at a man born blind receive sight john 9 1 to 5 the bible says he saw a man which was blind from his birth and this is what we call congenital blindness you know when something becomes congenital it means there is nothing you can do even the physicians they gave up no drugs no surgery can correct it because the man was born this way all right but the bible made us understand that he saw a man which was born blind from birth, and the bible made me understand that he had compassion on the man and when you if you look at it before jesus had an encounter with a man that was born blind you realize that Jesus was to be stoned to death at the Feast of Tabernacle at that time. So you notice while he was teaching at the temple, when he left the temple, he was teaching the people about before Abraham, I am. While he was trying to express his deity to the people, they became confused and they told him, how can you? Are you saying you are 50? Our fathers who have died long ago. So they got upset. They wanted to stone Jesus at that point in time. You know, when you look at the disposition of Jesus as that point of persecution, will be enough for Jesus not to see the man that was born blind. But despite the state he was in, the Bible says when he passed by, the man didn't see him. 
but he saw the man and that's exactly what we're going to be seeing in the book of Matthew and in the book of how, how Jesus located Matthew and saw. He said he saw the man and he went after the man. So basically when we are going through trials of time, when things are not working well for us, when we are being persecuted by people, how do we perceive our environment? How do we perceive the ministry that God has given to us? But Jesus, when he saw the man, the Bible said he had compassion on the man. Now, the key point is this. Christ saw this man first. Not the man because he was blind. So there was no way he would have seen Jesus. He said, Christ looks first, looks upon his chosen ones with an eye of love and mercy. And as he passes by them. And this is what we must understand. Whenever he looks at you, he looks at you with eye of love and mercy. So if you are walking out of the grace of God, it is not because God has left you. It is because you are walking in an illusion of a God that don't exist. That is the problem we have. Because he said, Lo, I will be with you always to the end of this. This is the word of God that changed not. So he looks at you with mercy. There is no way God can see you with reproach because we have been justified by the blood of Jesus. So he sees you with love and compassion. So if there are things not working well in your life, it is not because Jesus has left you, but you have to understand the dimension that everything worketh together for good for them that believe in him. All right. Now, when you go further there, he says, he looks upon his chosen ones with the eye of love and mercy as he passes by them. And we can see that in creation. All right. The love of God. He loved us. He created us. He said, let us create man in our own likeness and image. For the love that he has, he sent his son to die. And the same Jesus, through his death, he released the spirit of form love. He said so that we can have that spirit of love that he has. All right. So that we can love our neighbor as we love ourselves and love God above all things. Okay. Even in his death, he never gave, back, uh, gave up on us. All right. In the point of the death, he said, if it was possible, let this cause pass over me, but not my will. He said, but let your will be done because of the love of the work of the Father. And also in ascension, while Jesus was ascending, he saw his disciple. He told them, blessed are those who have not yet seen, but believe in me. He kept on blessing the people. He kept on looking at these people. He wants these people to be saved. And that is the essence of Christianity. In Matthew 9 verse 10, he said he saw a man which was born blind. In Matthew 9 verse 10, Jesus saw Matthew the publican first to be a follower of him. You can see the life of Jesus. In his ministry, he kept on seeing the unbelievers. He kept on seeing people who are living in sin. And one of the works of the Father was to propagate the gospel to these people. Why? To draw them to the knowledge of truth. And that was the same thing that happened to Saul on his way to Damascus. He had an encounter with Jesus. Not that he was preached to. But Jesus met with him and his life transformed. And that's when you look at these people. He said to live is Christ and to die is gain. Until you have an encounter of the king of glory, you can never say this. Believe me. No matter the encounter, if you don't have this encounter, you can never say to leave his Christ and to die his gain. And in that John 9 to 2, and his disciple asked him, saying, like I said before, Master, who sin did, man or his parents, that was born blind? And this was a question they need to ask Jesus. Why was this man born blind? Now let's look at the nations of the disciples. One of the notions was transmigration of souls into other bodies and generational cause. So when you know about transmigration, basically they said the man was existing before he committed sin. Now he reincarnated. So he's not paying for the price of the sin. And most of the time we talk about reincarnation. So there was transmigration of souls into the bodies. And this was the notions of the disciples and the Pharisees. And also, you know, we've dealt with generational cause that speaks about going from third to fourth generation. But we realize that in Ezekiel 18, 3, 4 to 6, Jesus corrected that notion. He said, you will no longer speak about this proverb in Israel anymore. And that was the word of God that was established at the time so this was the notion of the people and again when you look at Romans 5 verse 12 also to portray the point of the believers of the disciples he said the jews believe that by one man sin enter into the world and death by sin so death pass upon all men for all have sinned 
So for, with this scripture, they had this notion that there is something this man might have done that caused the man to be blind. And that's why I told you from the beginning, I said sin does not cause a man to be sick. So a lot of people sometimes when we are going through situations, the first thing that comes to our mind, that woman has been barren. Oh, maybe she has done abortions over time. Oh, that woman is not married. Oh, maybe he has cheated a lot of men. Oh, that man is in big disarray. Oh, maybe he did something. You know, we just keep attributing things to failure. But let's look at John 9 verse 3 and see what Jesus said to them. In John 9 verse 3, Jesus answered, Neither had this man sinned, nor his parents sinned. Is it but that the works of God should be made manifest in him? It's very amazing one. So whatever you're passing through today, I want to make you right as sure. And that's why when I'm passing through situation, I give God praise because I know that everything is working together for good for them that love God. And the same thing that happened to Joseph from prison, he became a prime minister because he had a revelation of God himself. All right. So they were asking him, but he said, neither of him, he said, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. Now, when you look at first Samuel, uh, one to two. This speaks about Hannah, and this is the scripture we all know. We are very conversant with Hannah. The Bible made me understand in verse four, five, six that the womb of Hannah was shot by God. And he said, the adversary, he said, they mocked Hannah because she was unable to give birth to a child. Now, let me read that first Samuel 1 verse 6. He said, and her adversary also provoked her soul. So, when you look at it today, it's because the Lord shot her womb. Even the adversary provoked her, 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 her soul. So we may be going through situations as believers. A lot of people, they're going to provoke you. They're going to come to you. Come on. Are you not a child of God? Do you want to say God exists? Are you saying it's the same God that we serve? Just like the message that came from uh, uh, John the Baptist that we misinterpreted. A lot of things will come to our mind. But God said but that the works of God should be made manifest in what? In him. And what happened? The Bible said, Hannah became pregnant and she gave birth exceedingly more than those that mocked her. And this is what we must understand. And when you look at the whole of 1 Samuel 2, the Bible says, Hannah just kept praising God. He sang a song unto the king of glory. Now, in John 9, from verse 4 to 8, in John 9, from verse 4 to 8, the Bible says, I must walk the works of him that sent me. While it's day, night coming, where no man can walk. Which is of priority as a believer. And this is what we're going to be seeing as recommendation in this text for today. So the work of God, he said, I must walk the work of him that sent me. And that's why we must do away with anything that don't glorify God as believers. So someone has hurt me. It's irrelevant. I must walk the work of him that has sent me. This person speaks ill about me. It's irrelevant. I must walk the walk that the Lord has sent me. This man is persecuted me for the cause of righteousness. It's irrelevant. I must walk the walk of him that has sent me because everything worked together for good for them that believe in God. And that's why I said in Ephesians 3 verse 20, the Spirit of God is an evidence of exceeding greatness of God and a proof and demonstration of the abundance power of God in us for us to do exceedingly above all that we have according to the power that walked in us. So we have the power to say no to envy. We have the power to say no to stress. We have the power to say no to worries. We have the power to say no to persecution because the Bible made me understand that these are all burdens and these can bring him out down and can lead to depression. And that's why Jesus said, come to me all you the labor and heavy laden and I will give you rest. Alright. And this is the word of God this morning. So the key point certain things happen to God's elect because that the power of divine grace might be displayed. You lose, you lost your job. It's not because Jesus is not merciful and compassion, but he's because he wants to glorify the name of God upon your life. And that is the word of God today. So that his work might be made manifest. All right. And that's when we look at it today when people come to us as believers and say we don't have a job. Our expectation is to speak voice into God's word. And pray prophecies into performance instead of laments and theological debates about the country that this country is so hard. They said that people don't get a job, or they said people who are born from this tribe they always act this way. No, 
according to the power that working in us. We are possessing the spirit of God. So we have the power and authority to look away, to be focused about the works that he has given us to do. He says, so I must do it while it is day. A time will come. You will not have the time to do the work. All right. So if you go further in the key point, he said his father's work was in necessity to him. Not to condemn, but to what? To save. So as a believer, we don't condemn other people. But the priority of a believer, the necessity is for all men to be saved. And that's when we look at 2 Peter 3 verse 9. He said the long suffering of God is for all men to be saved. So if you are a carrier of God's spirit and you are heirs with God and joint heirs with Christ, then the necessity of God should be your necessity. And that is the word of God this morning. His father's work was a necessity to him, not to condemn, but to save. And that's why the scripture says that we should follow peace with all men. Because without holiness, no man can see God in Hebrews 12 verse 14. Now, in John 9, 5 to 7, in John 9, 5 to 7, we're going to be seeing the necessity of a man that was born blind, that received sight, what Jesus was trying to illustrate here. As long as I am in the world, in John 9, 5 to 7, he said, because I must walk the walk. He said, as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. We can see that in John 8 verse 12. So can you confidently say that, that as long as you are in the world, that you are the light of the world? Can we confidently say that as believers? This is a question we must ask ourselves. Now, after these words, as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. He said, after these words, what are these words? Necessity he was under of performing the works of the Father. It was a great necessity to Jesus. The Bible said, he spat on the ground and made clay of spittle and he anointed the eyes of this man. And now this is the point a lot of people have taken to turn the church to herbalistic nature. So they say Jesus spat on clay. So they can tell you, look at the sun, gaze at the sun for two days. When you gaze at the sun, throw salt into water. Or they will tell you to put salt into water and begin to drink that salt. Or they will tell you to go to the river and bathe ten times. These are the defense to the scripture why people do that. They say even Jesus used clay. But we don't understand the revelation of what Jesus was trying to teach them. And that's why when he did that, didn't you realize that there was interrogation? It would have been easier for the disciples to say, wow, this is awesome. So we can also put clay. We can also take hairs to heal the eyes of the blind. Remember one thing you need to understand. For Jesus to speak on clay, for a man who cannot see, look at our eyes. You are rubbing clay on the eyes that is blind. The man will give you a big slap. You know how rocky or a little bit sandy the clay is. So for a man who cannot see you, you are trying to heal him. Then the next thing he sees you rubbing something that is kind of harsh on his eyes. That man will slap hell out of you. But the Bible said he was submissive. He obeyed God and he had his healing. But where am I going to? To drive away this herbalistic nature of believers away. So that you will stop running from anointing oil from one thing or the other that the Bible even spat on the clay. So I can anoint my eyes with oil. Recently someone called me and said, Pastor, come pray for my business. He said, when you're coming, come with anointing oil. So I didn't listen. I, I just laughed. I said, okay, I will come. So when I got up there, the first thing he asked me, he said, where is your anointing oil? <laughs> I said, my father didn't ask me to come with anointing oil. My father said, whatsoever I declare upon this business is going to come to reality because there is life and power in this world. And we spoke life upon this business. And he was just looking at me like, you know, he was waiting for the herbalistic nature of man. I said, no, I need to hear from my father. It has to do with direction, right? Now, what is the key point? This is the point we need to pay attention before we draw the curtain. Now, the key point... Clay was a most unlikely means of restoring sight to a man that was born blind. Like I said before, it even make a man blind more. And again, when you look at it, a man who was congenitally blind would not even have a socket right there. All right. Now, it says, this may be an emblem of the word of God. Now, just follow this. The emblem of God's word. That's the eye salve. Now, the meaning of the eye salve is what? A soothing influence or a remedy to hot feelings. So, the word of God is a remedy to hot feelings. Just basically, we saw the clay was a remedy to the man that was born blind. Now, of the gospel, pay attention to this. So, this may be an emblem of the word of God, the eyes have of the gospel, and which is very unlikely means in the opinion of natural man. 
This is what Jesus was trying to point out here. All right. Which is unlikely means in the opinion of a natural man who counts it foolishness of enlightening and saving sinners by the word of God. So, it will make sense to them because Jesus would have said, I command you to see and which he did to all the blind men. He would have spoken word into the eyes of the man and the man will see because his word is power. When the man had an issue, the centurion summoned, he said, just say the word and he spoke the word. What happened? He said, the man was made whole. Jesus gave thanks and there was multiplication. But why did he do this? He knew that the Pharisees were there. He knew that there would be discrepancies to those who were carnal. And this was an illustration of God's word. Make him understand that you will not understand because there is power in the word of God. All right. So this was an unlikely means in the opinion of a natural man who counts his foolishness of enlightening and saving sinners. And yet, by this foolishness of preaching the word, does save those that believe. So by the foolishness of the clay, he made known to them the power in God. So if you look at it, there was so much controversy at that point in time. They even had to go interrogate the, pa the, the, the parents. So this becomes foolishness to man, just the word of God. So men cannot comprehend. They cannot understand. How can this word of God be life? How can this word of God, when you speak it, things happen? How can this word of God become creative? But the Bible made me understand. He said he spoke the word. Let there be light and there was light. So people don't understand. How can the word of God, Jesus, be powerful? Alright. So, when you look at things, I want us to know there is. He hasn't seen Jesus, but he obeyed and submitted. And that's why Jesus said, blessed are those who have not yet seen, but believe. So, there is a blessing when you believe in the King of Glory in John 20, 29. So, he believed in God. He never bothered about the clay, but the Bible said he had his sight. And you see what he said. He never seen him, but he believed he was obedient to Christ's order, which is God's word. So how many of us are obedient to the word of God? Rather, we are not obedient to God's word, but we are obedient to our feelings, or basically we are more obedient to the word that is said by men. So we don't trust the word of God anymore. And that's why Proverbs 3, 5 to 6 says, we must trust God with all our heart. Why did he say you should lean not on our own understanding? And this was one of the wisest men in the scripture. We must trust in God totally and we must believe in his word of God that the word of God is power. So in John 9, 8 to 12, he became a topic of discussion. Everyone started speaking about this man, his case. So no matter what you're passing through today, God is saying, because I want to use you to glorify my name. And when he does, he said, you will become a topic of discussion. So you may be trusting God for one thing or the other. Something may have happened to you. You may be thinking, why did God allow these things happen? Come on, listen to me. Because God wants to manifest himself in your life. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. The key point is, persons enlightened by the Spirit of God and effectively caught by his grace are very free and ready to acknowledge that, so ready to acknowledge what they were before conversion. And that's why he said, I was blind. But now I can see. And we can see the life of Matthew the publican. The Bible says he went about preaching the gospel. And he wrote uh, the, uh, one of the books of the scripture. And also we can, we can talk about Saul that became Paul. You know, he was a battle ass in the hands of God. All right. And so many others we want to name. Even when he met the disciples, he called them into food. And they became fishers of men. And he was specific. He said, I want you to be what? fishers of men but a lot of people don't pay attention to that fishers of men so we have a lot of believers who are more concerned about their own satisfaction who are most concerned about their lives they don't love anyone if you don't love your neighbor how do you proclaim the love of god and that's why the bible said he had compassion because he's full of mercy in john 9 verse 11 in john 9 verse 11 he answered and said man that is called jesus made clay and anointed my eyes now this is the key point there. When he had as yet little knowledge of God, he learned his name. In that short time, he was able to mention that name Jesus. But there are people who have been believers for 30 years. When they see ghosts, the name of Jesus disappears from their head. And they begin to call, by the power of my pastor, or by the power of this prophet, the God of my prophet. 
No, there is a God through Jesus Christ. The name of Jesus disappears. He says, speak that word. Speak the name of Jesus. He said, I have made you an oracle. He said, I have made you sit in heavenly places. He said, I have given you their wisdom and authority to take the manifest wisdom to principalities and power. But we've been in the Christian world for years, but we don't trust in the name of Jesus. But with the little time he had with Jesus, he laid his name. He said, that man called Jesus hit me. He said, I was once blind, but now I can see. And that is quite amazing. And this is what God is calling us to today. He learned his name and he was recounting his deeds. How many remember his name when we are confronted as believers? Considering our years as believers. Do we thank God often to say, God, I thank you for what you've done for me on the cross of Calvary. And because of what you have done, say, Lord God, I want to propagate your gospel to the ends of the earth. Are we grateful for the blood of Jesus? How do we show that we are grateful for the blood of Jesus? Or how do we show that we are grateful to one another when we appreciate one another? You know what that means. And what is the recommendations for today? And I want you to follow these recommendations because we have a lot of believers, but they don't care about this perspective of life. I want to tell you one truth. Even if you read 200 ways to be successful, or 100 ways to be successful, we have so many books like that that are there. Have you not asked yourself, how come the everyone is not successful? You know, if those books were actually making people successful, I believe that we will all be successful by now. But there are some key principles that people are running away from. And this is the recommendations I'm going to tell you now. If you hold on to these recommendations, now, you're going to call me back and say, Pastor, you were right according to the word of God, not my word. My number is on the screen. You're going to come back to me and say, Pastor, you're right. You don't need to pray 12 hours. When you obey the word of God, you will see things happen for your sake. The first one is very key in Matthew 28, 19, verse 20. Matthew 28, 19, verse 20. Ask yourself, this is a command. He said, I must walk the walk of my father. Are you involved in this? You know what it is. He said, go out and spread the gospel. Baptize and teach. And he promised his awesome presence to the end of the world. Did he say only pastors? Are we propagating the gospel? Are we talking to someone about Jesus? Can people see us and say you are a believer? Have you seen someone's life is in disarray? You say no. It becomes a burden to you. You say bro this kind of life you are living will not lead you to eternity. And I want you to change. Do we actually love people enough? Or when we see our brother going through disarray, we begin to speak ill about them. Yes, that's good for him. Now that is the punishment of his sin. Oh God is now punishing this brother. This is not what God has called us to point fingers. He has called us to go out and spread the gospel, which is the truth of God, so that many will come to the knowledge of him. That is the first recommendation. Now, what is the second recommendation? In John 21, verse 17. In John 21, verse 17, he said, feed my sheep. Now, when Jesus said, feed my sheep, you know what he did? He, Jesus referred himself as our shepherd, meaning God is, our, is guiding us. So the law for God is to fill the sheep with the knowledge of God through the spreading of the gospel, which has to do with checking on our members. Their problem is not to come to church. And that's why when you look at it today, like I said, when you check on our members, they don't understand the dimension of the spirit. It becomes a body. They wonder, why is this pastor calling me all the time? We're not calling you because we want the church to be full. Because it will be of a less body to me, believe me, and less stress if I don't think about you, to be frank and sincere. So if I have 500 members and I begin to cough, are we wrong mad? So it will be safer for me if I just stay away and I don't call you. You come to church. See, let me tell you one truth. And I believe that we are all going to testify to this. I watched something recently, or basically I got an information of someone who had this uh, truth of what I'm going to say now. He said there was a man, maybe most of us heard about it, who a native doctor, we call them Sosea, basically went to the church to disgrace a pastor, told the ushers, go and call your pastor and come out, because the pastor was owing him balance. This is a true life story, was owing balance of the charm he gave him to plant in the church. So the pastor refused to pay and the church was booming and the, the, the native daughter, or what we call the soothsayer, became very angry and upset and went to the church and said, today I will get my balance. And that was actually embarrassing. Please just follow what I'm going to tell you. Now, the pastor, they did and did and struggled. He went into the church. He took the thing where he planted it, you know, and he left the church. And many people saw it. The next Friday, the church was full. So what am I trying to tell you? I call you, I don't call you, the church will be full. So when people call you, appreciate. 
a time will come. He said, the night will come when you'll be looking for ants to be your friend. You'll be looking for scorpion to play with, to say scorpion, to discuss with you. But we don't understand what is happening in our lives today. Walk the walks now. He said, there are a lot of heresies and blasphemy. A lot of things are happening. Believers don't want to hear the truth. And that's why in such a situation, people the next day said the church was so full. The man went to the church and said, this is unbelievable. And I was watching a video recently. I saw a, an old woman, which would be more than 60. She was boxing the devil. She was sweating. Some people took up last. They were cutting. I was just praying. And uh, somebody should not remove somebody's neck in the church. And other people were hitting the ground with broom. These are all deception. Because we run away from the truth, which is the word of God. So the world becomes foolishness to them. And that's why people can make the church herbalistic. They are waiting for the pastor to give them broom to beat the devil. When he has given you power to translate the manifold wisdom to principalities and power by the word of God. And you are using broom. What is broom? The witches, they fly with brooms. So when you bring broom, they'll be happy. They will use the broom to flog you hell out because you don't know what you're doing. Alright. The last recommendations. Don't worry, we have time to praise God like never before. The last recommendation, or basically the third one before the last one, is to shine the light in John 8, 12, which you said before. Shine the light to all those who are in the dark. Let our light attract those who are lost. If your life does not attract lost souls, my brother, you need to study the scripture more. It means we have more work to do. Our life, people should see you as a Bible. When they read it, they say, yes, I want to come to the knowledge of God's truth. All right. Don't allow everyone like you. There are a lot of people, they just want everybody to like them. They are so, I, I, I do wonder when somebody says, everyone just like me. Not lie. Everybody cannot, no matter how good you are. If everybody likes you, just know that you are going to a place of destruction. Everyone, trust me, even your brothers will envy you. I have seen a sister kill his sister because of his husband. He wants to inherit a man. Kill his own sisters. He said, brothers will kill brothers. They will hate brothers, even parents against their children. So why do you want the whole world to like you? You're deceiving yourself. Even the Bible said it in the scriptures. He said, it happened to me. It's going to happen to you. So don't run away from it. Speak the truth of God's word. In 2 Timothy 2, 2-3, he said, endure hardness that deals with resistance as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. He said, one who obeys all Jesus had taught him. And this is God's word. Have we obeyed the principle of God's word? And this is what the word of God is saying. Alright, in conclusion, we must not lose focus to feelings and emotions and assumptions, illusions, theological debates, but enter into God's rest now. And this is what the word of God is saying. We must come into his rest now. Leave everything you have. Anything that contradicts the scripture, drop it. Alright. Because we have a lot of things to think about. A lot of things to discuss. There are too many to discuss. A lot of things. Have you not asked yourself why would the disciples die that way? When you look at a, a lot of things that are happening in our society, you have questions to ask. He said, Do the work that he has called you to do. He said, Go tell them the blind see. Someone was telling me, He said, I want to leave that church because the church, they don't, uh, people don't fall under the anointing. I said, Oh, you are very free to leave our church, but I can tell you the truth. Many were jobless, they got jobs. Many were sick, they were healed. I know a lot of testimonies that I've seen, even in my life and my family. So, you leaving the church does not stop the move of God. It's knowledge and understanding. And the Lord will bless us. Wherever you are, you don't know Christ. And your life is not reflecting Jesus. This is a time. To run away from theological debates and feelings. Come to the knowledge of God. Say, God, I want to come to you. Wherever you are, you've looked at your life. Your life cannot even replicate Jesus. No one can say you are a believer. We are hiding in shadows and we are outside the church. We don't want people to know that we are believers. But we are in the church. We prostrate and worship God like never before. But this is not what God is saying. He said you should do the work now because night comment when no man can walk. What is more important is eternity. That for us to make heaven because there is hell. Hell is real. We must speak it out. Alright. Lay your hands on your chest and say, Lord Jesus, I come to you. I know that you died for me on the cross of Calvary so that I will be saved. Ah, I was one blind spiritually. Say, Lord God, but now I can see because I have come to the knowledge of you. Say, Lord God, I know that you died, buried, and resurrected. Sit at the right throne of God in heaven, interceding for me. Say, God, as I have placed my hands in the plow, may I never look back in the mighty name of Jesus. 
Thank you, faithful Father, for we bless your holy name. For in Jesus' mighty and powerful name, we pray. Thank you, Jesus. Now, the prayer we're going to be praying today as we prepare for praise is just a prayer of thanksgiving. I want you to thank God because he has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. That is the prayer for today. Say, God, I thank you because you have called me out of darkness into your marvelous light. Thank you for saving my soul, Lord God Almighty. Thank you because I will not perish. Thank you because I am totally free. Thank you because I am in Mount Zion. Thank you because my life is hidden in you, Lord Jesus. In the name of Jesus, give him all the thanks, Lord, I thank you. For in Jesus' mighty and powerful name we have thanks. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Just hallelujah. give God a big praise and hallelujah. Now, quickly, we're going to be going to the few announcements. Uh, the basic one is uh, by 12 o'clock, the Sadgo will be online today at the ROCCG Middle East and the Maranatha Dubai. Let's hook on. The word of God is never enough. And again, every Sunday is our prayer meeting. Last week was powerful and awesome. And this week, by Sunday, we'll be having our prayer meeting. Then every Monday is our Bible study. Uh, the prayer meeting is from 9 to 10. All right. I want us to join to pray. It's called a night of intercession, interceding for souls. All right. And again, uh, on Monday is our Bible study where we teach the word of God. All right. Extensively, last week was powerful. And this week will be glorious in the mighty name of Jesus. And also, by the end of the month, we'll be having voice into God's world. We're going to be teaching us a dimension of entering into God's rest and becoming successful as a believer. And the Lord has put it in my heart to teach about the glory of God. So many people don't understand what the glory of God is. All right. And uh, also, every Wednesday is Divine Encounter at the Zone 3 headquarter, which is called the Power and Praise. Every 12 midnight is a night of Divine Encounter where we pray and encounter God like never before. So if you believe that the Lord has blessed you, I want you to put on your dancing shoes as we're going to praise God. And also, I want you to like and share the praise. As you do that for others to hear the gospel, you saw the recommendation. Go out and preach, but now we cannot go out. Share and like the page. And the Lord will bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. He's turning around, he's turning around, he's turning around for me. He's turning around for me. He's turning around, he's turning around, he's turning around for me. He's turning around for me. He's turning around.
Never. Ha.